But the Bible says that an angel of the Lord went to Israel and began to destroy the people because David asked the people to be counted. And the angel went to the threshing floor of Anan, Anan. And David had to go there to make a sacrifice, build an altar unto the Lord and make a sacrifice so that the angel will stop destroying the people. When he went there, he demanded for the threshing floor of Onan. And Onan agreed to give him free. But hear what David said. He said, and King David said to Onan, Nay, but I will not, I will verily buy it for the full price. For I will not take that which is thine for the Lord nor offer burnt offering without a cost. It simply means that David said, I will not give God what does not cost me anything. I am not going to give God what is not valuable to me. Any day you give to God what you don't value, know that God himself does not value it. If you as a man do not give, give what you don't value. How much more God? So tonight is the first night of this meeting. And it is good to plant early. I want you to take a valuable offering. Something that to you is costly. And lift it up unto the Lord. And say, God, I am happy to be here. Come on, take a good offering. What is valuable to you? What cursed you something? Lift it up unto the Lord. Lift it up unto the Lord. If you can, just wave your hands to the Lord. Take an offering. Wave your hands unto the Lord. And say, God, I give it with joy. Tell him it is valuable to you. As you give today, the heavens will be opened unto you. Father, we give tonight a valuable offering unto you. And we ask God that the things that heaven value shall locate your people as they give in the name of Jesus. We give it with joy. Receive it from our hands. For we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Our worship team will take the songs and we will come out. We have many baskets and there will be some people at the middle who will be taking the seed. Please come out, give orderly. God bless you. Celebrate Jesus tonight. If you know, just wave your hands to God. Wave your hands to God. Wave your hands to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be So we lift up.
situation at all. Only you are able. So so you are able to go by. Only you can do what no man can do. Only you can say what no man can say. Only you can change any situation at all. Only you are able. So so you are able to know. Can you put up, put your hands together as we call the victory voices uh, to come on stage? Please, if you are clapping, do better than that. The best choir east of the Niger can do better than that. Give them a better clap offering. Hallelujah. Victory voices.
can see his power, power, power walking in me. African Pentecostal clap offering. I don't know whether you know all those who are here tonight and those that shall be here tomorrow night and those that shall be here all the days of this program are selected by God. This is not a traditional crusade. We are here that anyone that comes from a family where people die prematurely and die unexpectedly and die at the bloom of their age, every grave dug for them shall within this week be closed. I walked into this hall and God said to me, oh my, every woman looking for the fruit of the womb, how many of them did God say 43 shall get pregnant that week, whether their husband were in Jerusalem or in Uyo. And when, and when the time for Test money scale, we found that three of them were already past 52. And therefore, in this program, all those who said you will never be a mother shall be declared liars this week. I was shocked at the sisters. Fellowship meeting no nature. God said to me, Oma, I'm going to heal 1,000 cancer patients without prayer. When we counted the number, there were much more than that. In fact, I cried. At the, at the PFM Bannel Conference in Medellin, the year before last, God said to me, you all are all equal in fellowship, but not in anointing. Declare that I will heal 1,200 cancer patients without prayer. My friends protested. My, they all were angry. They said this again, the rule of the game. Preach and then pray, and we shall count. And I replied and said, we are equal in fellowship, but not in anointing. When the number of those who were healed were counted, there were 5,000. shall be a week of great testimonies. I want you to know that God has a great plan for your life. I am particularly excited to be part of this type of program because I come from a family where people used to die prematurely. I don't know if you know your father could be a rich man, but if he dies early, you are to be pitied. My father was rich. He had eight wives. But the man died very early, and the money was useless to me. And I began to cry and say to God, change this scenario. 
And God showed me what I call the dividends of Calvary. You will not remain the same. I don't care who is running after you. This program is also designed for you to have a relationship with God, which is the greatest miracle that can happen in your life. Once you have a relationship with God and begin to walk with him, you are going to become too dangerous for any enemy to handle. And that's where I want God to position you. Where you, you, I don't care how small you are, where you will be too dangerous for any enemy to handle. My relation took me to court last year. They said I was not part of their farmland, <laughs> which was okay by me. I don't farm. I don't know how to farm. And I'm married to a girl who will not allow me to be a farmer. The first judge in Umwaha asked to know which woman. They said that one you know. That ranting fanatic. That stupid preacher. And the man said, I don't want to die now. Take the case to his area, or Hafia. They took the case to Hafia. The high court judge said, I married only three months ago. I don't want to die now. Take the case to Aruchuku. They took the case to Aruchuku. The judge said, I don't even want to see this woman. Can his lawyer be sent to see me? My brothers got angry and took the case to Native Dr. Shrine. On their way out, the leader died. The next morning, the, the man they went to consult died. Seven days after, six of his assistants all died in one day. How many of you are happy that God has included you among those that he wants to bless. I want to thank the, the program committee, the Miracle Convention Committee. They have done marvelously well. Let's give them a good clap off from somebody. I also want to thank the, the classical choir. I promised you an organ. I don't have the gift of forgetfulness. Once you can find an organ within you, you hold me. It shall be yours. You will share it with the Victory Voices. Can we give a clap offering to the Victory Voices? From uh, Madam, your friend is from where? There's a group that has offered to give us five buses a day. Huh? Upper West, are they here? Is a man here? I don't know whether you know the platform we're using tonight, the lighting came all the way from our nature free of charge. It didn't cost us one couple. Somebody came all the way from Lagos and said God asked him to paint the exterior of these buildings. And it was painted free of charge. Why do you clap like unbelievers? God has blessed me with sons. No. No, when I say this, I have to be careful. Everybody claims to be my son. Even though that is a lie. Uh, and I'm not saying you have not invested in, cannot belong to your father. 
I like Nigerians. They like to drop names. You're my father. You don't know his name. You don't know his mother. You don't know where he comes from. Because we are the only people under the sun that want good roads without paying any tax. Nigerians want success without paying the cost of success. Only in stealing can you take a car without paying for the car. Am I correct? That's what Nigerians do. <laughs> They're wonderful people. Tonight I have I, I have a son that God gave me as a gift. Nineteen nineteen seventy two when I first arrived, we you no Calabar to start work for a company as a, a, as a manager. The SU, the scriptural union, was bubbling with zeal and excitement. And they used to drag me from Calabar to speak for them. And you can't believe this. His father was one of the few persons we had that loved the Lord, that gave all he had to serve the Lord, that forgot even his name. Even though he was a medical doctor, the father loved this God beyond imagination. And two of us became brothers. When I left for a Bible school in America, I left my family with him. And one of my sons died. He made sure that he brought the boy back to life before telling my wife. Um, suddenly, God, I think heaven needed a, a man of such commitment and dedication and consecration. And God took him away from this world and uh, <laughs> appointed me the now acting senior father. We have a relationship that is indescribable. We don't struggle to belong to each other. It's, it flows naturally to us. And I was shocked that God gave him a wife that uh, I had to say in that, in that marriage. And I say have a say in that marriage even today. The The worst thing in life is to have no successful child. My father used to say to me, I'd rather have no child than have an unsuccessful child. Read three hours a day. Be an avid reader and you will be my son. I don't know how long he reads, but when he picks the microphone, the microphone will tell us the story. My father used to flog me for not giving him the hope and the promise that one day I shall be a successful man. My father would flog me, not when my mother uh, would be awake, but between 2 a.m. and 3, when my mother shall have gone to bed. The man would flog me with my legs hanging in the air, and he would not bring me down until I urinate. So I had to learn how to urinate from that height very quickly. <laughs> the man said to me, an unsuccessful child is no child. Because he will watch you sit under a leaking roof and will not help you. He will watch you go to bed without food and will not help you. If you're sick, he will watch you die without help. And my father would say to me, I was the only child of my parents. I took good care of them. I made sure they lacked nothing. And I want a son like I was to my own father. Work hard, study hard, be an avid reader, be a successful man. And I will call you my son. But if you fail, tell the world, I don't even know you. 
I had never seen it before. I don't know who brought it to my house. I am saying this to all of us. An unsuccessful child is no child. When you go home on Christmas and you, you go without bread, your mother will cause the day you were born. But tell your mother you came home with loaves of bread for her. She will dance for you. The day I gave my mother a cow to celebrate her, she said to me, you don't give cows to women in the eastern part of Nigeria. Madam, I have become one of the leaders of the east. We decide what will happen. The latest is buy a cow for your parents. And my mother became a prophetess. She began to prophesy. There is nothing as wonderful as having a successful son. And if you are not, it's not yet late. You can begin tonight. How many of you will start tonight? Let me see your hand raised up. Raise it very well. Before I bring my son, I don't know how, if I, if I tell you the wife is also my daughter, you've been likely to file a case against me in a good court, but I shall win the case. The wife is my daughter, and I want her to come out and greet you. And uh, I don't know if you know, she's a lady of songs. So I ask her to, even if she didn't prepare, let her mutter a song or sing a song or murmur a song. It shall be a song. <laughs> Are you on my side? The only Mrs. Reverend Ntente, come and spoil us with a good song. Lift your hands and shout a big hallelujah. Daddy and mommy, I don't take this privilege for granted. Thank you so much for the privilege of being your, your children, my husband and myself. Let's lift our hands and worship him. Lift your hands to him. Lift your hands to him. You
receive the healing that they need in the name of Jesus. Let the power receive the freedom they need in the name of Jesus. Let the oppressed receive the liberty they need in the name of Jesus. Let doors that were closed be opened finally in the name of Jesus. You sent forth your word and it healed them and delivered them from their destruction. No bondage will go back with anyone in the name of Jesus. Send the anointing that makes ministry easy. Holy Ghost, you are our helper. We will not leave you the same way we came. In Jesus' name, and everybody says amen. Help me look for three people and tell them my blessing shall be bigger than your own. Yeah, whether they like it or not, uh, whether they agree with you or not, uh, eyes have not seen. Yes, I've not heard. Somebody shout yes. Genesis 37. When 
interested in verses 5 to 11, but we'll read just verse 5, verse 9, and then verse 11. Genesis 37, verse 5, and Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. Verse 9. What was his reply to their hatred? And he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. Verse 11. His brethren envied him, but his father observed the same. I like to speak on the topic. Give me a big dream. Somebody shout, Lord, give me a big dream. Now the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 11 that we must be very careful when we read about the stories in the Bible. The Bible says these things happened unto them for examples and they were written down for our admonition. That tells me three things. Number one, everything written in the Bible happened. We are not just reading some careless stories story it happened we are not just reading some figurative speech it happened Joseph happened his dream happened the fact that he dreamt happened so this is something real that we are reading about second thing not just that it happened they are written down for our example so everything that happened to another person is ex an example for me if somebody succeeded and it was written it's an example to me that I can succeed if somebody was healed and it was written it's an example to me that I can be healed if somebody prevailed over a battle and it was written it's a sign to me that I too will prevail if somebody had a big victory and crossed the Red Sea by a miracle no matter the sea that is in front of me the God that divided it before will do it again somebody ought to shout amen right there if somebody was barren for a hundred years and God still gave him an high child it means no matter how old I am all things are still possible if somebody started from nothing and though his beginning was small yet his letter end was greatly increased it means no matter where I am don't count me out yet though there be many that are against me God is still my helper and the lifter of my prophesy upon somebody here by this time next year those that are looking down on you they will look up to you by this time next year where they said you are a nobody you will be a somebody for the stone which the builders has rejected is about to become the chief cornerstone. Shout yes in the house of God. Shake your neighbor, say it happened, it happened, it happened. It happened, it happened, it happened, it happened. That's why it was written down. Now help me go back to that person and push him and say, it will happen again. It will happen again. I must have my own miracle. It will happen again. I must build my own house. It will happen again. I must get my own job. It will happen again. I must cross my Red Sea. It will happen again written down for our learning written down for our monition and the third thing there means inside every story are principles that are applicable today inside every happening are lessons that I can also apply inside every recorded history are 
prophecies uh, that can reproduce themselves uh, in my life. Number one, uh, every success story uh, begins uh, from a dream, uh, an idea, a vision, uh, an inspiration. Uh, all you need uh, to begin your success journey, uh, the journey to your healing, uh, the journey to your freedom, uh, the journey to your prosperity is to have a dream. Abraham began by God saying, I have a land I will show you. And he told him, lift up your eyes from where you are. Look to the north, the south, the east, the west. All the land that you can see, I'll give it to you. Come and count the stars, Abraham. So shall thy seed be. He had a dream. I announced to somebody here, right there where you are seated, receive a big dream receive a big vision receive a divine idea shout i have a dream you want to become great begin with a dream you want to become successful begin with a dream you want to become outstanding begin with a dream you want to become known a voice in your generation begin with a dream what is a dream Number one, in the context of our discourse, a dream refers to a divine revelation of the plan and purpose that God has for creating you. Our God is a God of purpose, a divine revelation of the plan and purpose that God has or had for creating you. He said to Jeremiah, before I formed you, I knew you. While you were in your mother's womb, I ordained you and sanctified you. That means if I didn't have a plan, I would not have created you. You are not an accident. You are not a nothing. If I didn't have a purpose, I would not have created you. If I didn't have a plan for you, the fact that you are alive is a sign that God has a plan for you. Somebody looking at me here today, I'd like you to tell yourself, God has a plan for me. He said, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you you thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end jump and shout God has a plan for me I am not in nothing I am not in nobody I know God has a plan open thou my eyes oh Lord that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law call upon me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Whoever God sent me to hear under the next 21 days, your eyes will see a revelation. Your eyes will see a revelation. A revelation for your change of level. A revelation for your new openings. A revelation for your promotion. Shout, show me a revelation. Who said that you are finished? You are not finished yet. He that began a good work in you, he will be faithful to complete it. Who has written you up? Rejoice not over me, my enemy. When it looks like I have fallen, I might be down today, but I'm on my way to somewhere. I might be nothing today, but I have a dream inside of me. Show me a revelation. A divine revelation. A divine revelation. A divine revelation. Number two, what is a dream? A mental picture of a preferred future. A mental picture. Your mind has the capacity to picture your future. Your mind has the capacity to picture your tomorrow. Stop wasting your mind only picturing your past. Picture your future. Allow your mind travel into your tomorrow. Allow your mind browse into your tomorrow. You say, what if I see it and it doesn't come to pass? What do you lose? 
What do you lose? And what if I see it and nothing happens? What do you lose? But I said to you, what if you see it and it happens? What if you picture it and you capture it tomorrow? And what if you see yourself in the palace today and five years from now you are in the palace? What if you see yourself building your house and seven years from now those that laughed at you are coming to who am I talking to here? Somebody shout, I see a better tomorrow. I see a brighter future. I see a brighter future. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the crowd is sinking sand. Being confident of this very thing. That he which has begun a good work in me. He will perform it unto the perfect day. Who am I talking to here? Your God didn't bring you this far to disappoint you. Your God didn't bring you this far to waste your life. Life. Your God didn't bring you this far to waste your destiny. I announce to somebody here, no matter where you are today, your future shall manifest. Your tomorrow shall appear. Your tomorrow shall show up. Help me tell two people near you, get ready for my tomorrow. Ay, 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 ay. Don't laugh at me yet. Get ready for my tomorrow. Don't mock me yet. Get ready for my tomorrow. Don't write me off yet. Get ready for my tomorrow. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence come my help? My help come from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. Who am I talking to here? I prophesy. You will bring back honor to your father's house. You will bring back glory to your father's house. God shall use you to wipe away the shame of your father's house. Somebody say, Lord, give me a big dream. Louder, Lord, give me a big dream. They say nobody can have money. Give me a big dream. They say nobody can build a house. Give me a big dream. They say nobody can rise. Give me a 